I'm trying to explain hysteresis in one word, like we sort of boiled it down to like sudden change and thinking, you know, well, we should communicate that through movement somehow. Um, but I, I'm kind of glad that we didn't. Like, I think what we did was probably ultimately more successful. And it sort of creates maybe this eerie environment of what could be, you know, or what's mm -hmm. to come. I don't know. This now is the, just plotting is the stable state out of that figure. And steady again, if you were to start off with B very small, you'd have a, basically this, you'd be in this realm where there's a lot of forest. And you see, as you increase the logging rate, it'd only be a very, very gradual change in the amount of biomass until all of a sudden you cross this point here. And once you've crossed this point, there's essentially nowhere to go all the way down to the bottom because this is all unstable, so you can't really stay here. And so you, you end up seeing sort of, again, this, from being up here, and like, literally, if you're sitting right here at the edge, you might think, you know, hey, we just change the logging a little bit, get a little bit more wood, not much changes in the forest, but then you just across that, and you have a very, very rapid collapse. And again, I think people are starting to understand this idea of the rapid collapse. I mean, like Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point, is all about that idea. But I said, when Jeff asked me what I wanted to talk about, what I think, uh, isn't as well thought about as one is that the tipping point doesn't tip back. So you've just had a collapse, and you might want to say, well, all we have to do is just take back our rate of logging a little bit, and everything will be fine again. But what ends up happening is you actually have to traverse the entire curve up to here until you get to this next flipping point where you can then restore back. And you know, this is something we actually see like in real systems. I mean, like the classic one being fisheries collapse, where you have this sort of like, we, every year we kind of take gradual increase in the take. So we sort of say, well, everything's going fine, we can take a little bit more next year, and then the fishery collapses. And you always see these policy means where they sort of say, well, let's look at where we were before the collapse. We'll just sort of legislate that amount, and of course the fishery doesn't recover because you basically have to take, you know, again, you'd have to go way, way, way back to get the recovery. The first pair represents um, the a shift between the Alternate stable states of a uh, grassland, like a scrub grassland, and a desert. So it's basically desertification. Um, and you can see sort of what we are trying to do with the shape of the of the hysteresis curve. The catastrophe cusp is the idea that you can have the system can be sort of pushed by very gradual means from being one that's relatively stable, to, which goes from gradual changes to one that can have this multiple stable state behavior. You know, for example, here, uh, the transition to forest to grassland tends to be the, 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 the driver of the hysteresis change is logging, but changes in global factors like climate and global rainfall can cause that from being a gradual change to being one that's just sudden and dramatic and just like a crash. Huh. Mm -hmm. Right. It's creepier to hear you talk about this stuff in low light. There's one thing about this that I'd like to point out that mm. um, these bags have been sort of textured with our fingers, and so each, you know, one of these little holes represents our fingerprints, and in a way, I think you could say it represents like our collective human impact on this landscape. Mm -hmm.